A volatile lens could be the best new additional perk that can be blessed on us from Void 3.0 and it makes everything we touch go boom. Now of course there is a bit more to it as we can combine it with other things to grant us more health or ability energy back. But either way, if you ever run anything void based, this will be the top skill you want to have straight away. However, if there's one thing I also like most to play with is the swords, and I'm going to show you why combining volatile rounds with black talon is crazy fun and quite powerful for end game content. Combining black talon, void through and own, volatile rounds and stronghold allows you to wreak absolute havoc on everyone and everything you face, no matter the shield type, and I generally mean it. There isn't much talk around this combo, but it's low key crazy when you get rolling. If you want to feel like an uber Dark Souls character with everything, including the mass deaths, then sit on by and let me tell you how I got here. But you know what else feels like a Dark Souls character on the verge of death? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video, then please do leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications for more stuff like this in the future, as it really does help me out. Starting with the subclass, we will be following a method allowing us to have a pure overshield on demand build and will utilize these to give us enough damage protection so that we can head first into fights without being taken out straight away. The subclass type is more focused on defense than anything else we have dealt with, so the fragments can be flexible depending on what you think fits best for your sword playstyle. However, you must make sure you have a bubble as that goes hand in hand in what we are doing. Aspects wise, we have Bastion which allows us to cast an overshield on others when we use our super, and using our barricades also grant us and our team's overshields and they can also regenerate lost shields over time, which is helpful in the long run. We then have Offensive Bulwark, where we can regenerate grenades faster, have increased melee range and damage, and melee final blows extend our duration, as long as we have an overshield or bubble. For Fragments, we have Echo of Remnants which increases the duration of our grenades, Echo of Persistent which increases the duration of overshields, and Echo of Undermining which allows us to weaken targets with our grenades. For the stats, we have 93 in Resilience, 66 in Discipline, and 69 in Intellect. The main one you want to focus on is your resilience as we want to maximize that overshield we get for safety when using our sword. The rest of the stats help us out as we can use our grenades more to debuff and gather our super energy faster which all benefits the build. For key mods we have Lucan Blade which allows us to do extra damage when charged by light but also increases the charge rate for equipped swords, elemental ordnance for creating wells via grenades, battle for wells for times 2 wells created, Reaper and Wellmaker for creating wells via making barricades in a net and a kill, and volatile flow which turns our weapons volatile for a few seconds. Lastly, we also are using the Stronghold Exotic, as this will grant the user match guard stats on all swords and also grants us healing if you block at the right time. For the sword build, you don't need a lot to make it work and only need a handful of things to make the build pop off. You can add on things like Well of Tenacity, Font of Might, Striking Light, and Elemental Charge to the mix as well as these can enhance your sword playstyle if you're going to be using it fully. Of course, you can make an all rounder setup like shown to where your sword is still powerful but you can also rely on your other weapons as well. There is many ways you can take this so don't think that this is the one and only playstyle you have to adapt to. For weapons, these are down to the user in terms of what fits best for endgame and using swords and there is many ways of going about this. For start, I have the Hangzhou Scout Rifle with Bottomless Grief and Explosive Payload, a nice and simple scout to use when taking on anti barrier champs and you can't get the following weapon anymore sadly as it's not in rotation, but it will hopefully make a return in the near future. Now of course you can go ahead and get the Juju Bound AR with Perpetual Motion and 4 times the charm, which is giving you an increase in kinetic damage over time and is quite good with sustaining shots as long as you land critical hits. Now secondary wise we have the Paladrome Hand Cannon with Outlaw and Turnabout and this is a handy weapon to use as Turnabout will grant us an overshield if we take out other combatants shield with it. Now just to be aware that the overshield will be giving us at least 30 HP compared to others so it's not super strong but it can be handy if you're waiting for your battle case to come back up just before then. You can get a better roll than this for example and you can get a version that has damage perks on it or a version that has more ammo available but you got to go ahead and grind it out if you ever want that to be the case. If you don't have Paladrome or can't grind for one anymore then the next best bet you'll want is the title SMG from Guardian Games. 
is void, it's easy to get, it hits hard and it has flexible parts that you can use for PvE related content. For heavy, I've chosen to use the Black Talon as a severely underrated weapon by all means, and it can be an absolute powerhouse once you start to use it and it's not a trait to the max. Now the sword allows you to fire a heavy void projectile at your target which is as simple as it gets, but if you have the catalyst available, you can get a 50% damage boost if you block a combatants at the last moment they fire the weapon, and you can also get your health back thanks to the strong hold. But it doesn't stop there, once you add on volatile rounds to the sword, your damage is going to increase even more to the point of taking out chunks of ultra combatants health in one shot, or just one shot on anyone else nearby it. So, with the setup I have in mind, you can use your sword heavy attack on a repeated basis as a way to inflict heavy damage quickly and then move in for new light attacks. Ideally, if you want a better idea as to see how powerful the build is and the setup in general, it's probably best you just look at the clips as currently being shown just so you can get a better understanding as to how powerful it is. For the stat coverage, we want Resilience to be the highest single stat available for our use, as this will be linked in with how often we get overshield. For us to make sure we can use our swords and build safely, I would advise you aim for at least 80 to 100 Resilience for max cooldown. This can be easily achieved through simple stat investments, through ghost mods, or just running a high level activity to gain it easily. But this is the first and foremost stat you need to invest in if you want this build to work. We do have the installation mod that you can use, which will reduce your class ability cooldown upon collecting orbs of power, but this should be enough for the mod side of things as your elemental worlds actively will be helping you reduce all your stats, including Reaping World Maker. Your discipline now can stay at 60 or can be increased higher so you can proc the debuff abilities more often. However, don't let this fully take over the key mod being used as its purpose isn't marked as highly compared to everything else. No additional mods are needed in this area except for Bountiful Well and Elemental Ordnance, and perhaps the Overload Grenade mods as well if you think there's some use for it. Lastly, your intellect falls in the same area as your grenades as they are important for the build, but don't need too much investment to make them work. For this, aiming for 50 to 70 ranges is good and can help you reduce any cooldown of your super. Adding on the hands on or ashes to as mod can also help further improve this area, but only if you wish. And also, don't forget the Font of Wisdom mod if you want something to actively buff you in the background with little effort involved. Leftover wise, add the Sword Scavenger mod for more sword reserves, and that Luke and Finisher mod for creating heavy ammo, rear finishing Luke and Hive, and champions. Now, let's round up everything we have learned and put into a list for you to see. For Head, we have Discipline, Hands On, and Lucan Blade mod. Arm, we have Recovery and Elemental Ordnance mod. Chest, we have Discipline, Firmish of Plating, because of Dampener and Powerful Worlds mod. Leg, we have Discipline, Insulation, Sword Scavenger, and Weaving Wellmaker mod. Mark, we have My Resilience, Overload Grenades, Lucan Finisher, and Volatile Flow mod. So, as you can see within the build, you are able to launch avoid based projectiles like a band, and watch how you are able to wipe them out in a single shot. The amazing thing about using Black Talon compared to everything else is how you can swap to light attacks quickly and then back to heavy and use it however you like. What I mean by this is that the majority of swords will require you to be up close and personal and make full use of them, which makes sense, but using BT instead can allow you to play close, mid to long ranges as you please, and can be combined with other things to make it pay off. We can increase our damage and gain health back simply from blocking at the right time, we get an overshield up and ready and produce swells so that we can have volatile rounds ready on demand and then we can go nuts with little care in how much damage we are taking as everything just works as planned. Oddly enough, this combo is very effective at taking out Ultra and Mini Boss's health within seconds, as simply playing Legend to master content, I can still do some effective damage against them even when match game is on and active. Of course, the build isn't limited to just BT. You can use the Iron Banner Razor Edge Sword as it can roll with Chain Reaction, something that only this sword can get. Or perhaps you want something that is more impactful. World of Crown Splitter is a great tool to use if you'd like to have a pocket nuke on demand. What I'm trying to say is that Volatile Rounds with any Void Sword is viable in today's content and can pack a punch depending on combatants and sword type used. With these three swords in hand, I can dedicate my build to focus on highly offensive playstyles that leans heavily into what sword types do, and slapping on volatile rounds just make the build even more effective at its job. 
it's not endgame worthy to use on Grandmaster or Master Raid unless you know what you're doing, but anything below that is where it will shine the most and Roy Swords have never ever gotten the chance to shine until now. Don't sleep on this combo, give it a spin, whirl or slam and let me hear your thoughts. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.